What's up, volleyball fans? I'm Darren Tipton, and welcome to the VB Adrenaline Podcast. Our podcast, we will dive deep into the heart of the game, bringing you the hottest topics, prospects, and a buzz surrounding prep and college volleyball, especially the world of recruiting. In each episode, our crew will spotlight rising stars who are shaking up the national game. Plus, we will serve you the scoop on current events that have coaches and fans talking courtside. Tune in for the episodes that spotlight tomorrow's college stars, new trends in the sport, plus interviews that will keep you informed on the explosion that is volleyball in the USA. You can connect with us on social media, Instagram at vbadrenaline.com underscore and Twitter at vbadrenaline. Be part of the conversation. Share your thoughts on your favorite players, prospects, and predictions by using hashtag VBAdrenaline. So grab a seat, volleyball fans, and get ready to dive into the world of spikes, sets, and serves with the VB Adrenaline Podcast. See you there. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the VB Adrenaline Podcast. And uh, Darren Tipton with another exciting episode of talking everything around the sport of volleyball. We talked recruiting. We talked current events. Uh, we talked college. Uh, we talked Olympics. We talked a little bit of everything. And this week's episode, we are leading up to uh, one of the events that I've been, um, haven't been more excited about anything like this in quite a while. Uh on the horizon, not too far away, is the first surf showcase uh, put on by the ABCA. And so I have invited in Jamie Gordon, uh, president of the ABCA, to talk all things first surf showcase. So, Jamie, uh, thanks for coming on. Now, Darren, thanks for having me. Excited, uh, exciting time, and uh, happy, uh, happy to be on. Yeah. Now, first of all. The viewers don't know, but I want to thank you for you and your office uh, letting me bug the heck out of you guys um, this summer. And uh, you've been gracious. I have learned a ton and just let me tag along. I I am pumped for this. Um, and then Amy Pauly and I are going to preview it even more next week uh, leading up to this. But let's just hop right into it. Um, the four teams... Um, and A, you're bringing this event back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there's a long history with this event. It it started um, actually in 1995. Uh, it was the NACWA um, uh, showcase. And um, specific, it was then um, had grown and was a State Farm Classic. And um, it had um, was an opportunity to, to really show mm -hmm. the best teams going from the prior year going into um, okay. the season. It happened in that week zero. And then um, it ran uh, pretty much nonstop until 2011. Um, and it changed a little bit. It morphed as legislation changed and times of the, the when, when uh, teams were permitted to start uh, competing. And so there were some things there. And so it went kind of in hibernation. It had always lived in the NCAA manual uh, as uh, an, an event ex exemption. And uh, one of the things when I first got here was to, to really take a deep look and say, is there an opportunity for us to bring that back? Because um, with all the growth and all the momentum that we have yeah. in the sport right now, we <clears throat> want to be able to, to create a marquee event yeah. and that weekend when there's no college football there's no nfl football um everybody's excited and and leading up to the to the season and so we took a lot of time and had a lot of help to to put some legislative efforts to get this uh, across to where we could regain um that week zero uh ability to host this event well and that's what i think is so great about this like college football and when you're a college football fan you got, I mean, they change the sponsor every year, but you got that game in Jerry World every mm -hmm. year, right? And that's what I came to you guys with. Now, I'm not ESPN, but I'm like, hey, ESPN is there every year. And they broadcast two days in advance. And mm -hmm. as a college football fan, you, you tune into that, right? And now volleyball has that. And whether you're a fan of these four teams, you're going to – 
you're going to tune in to get pumped up for the season. And great job of the four programs, by the way. Well, and I have to give them, those four coaches, head coaches, uh, a tremendous amount of, of credit here because we had a whole lot of um, unknowns. And because NCAA legislation doesn't move very quickly. Um, and there's a lot of committees and a lot of processes and, and things like that. So we're even with a lot of help, it just takes a while to get that um, done. The other thing that we were dealing with was a restructuring of preseason timing. And um, we had put in some legislative waivers to um, gain a couple of extra days of practice for all Division I um, programs just because of the way that the calendar is. So there was all of these variables and all of these unknowns and credit to, um, you know, uh, Danny Busboom Kelly and, and John Cook and Kelly Sheffield and Craig Skinner, um, because I asked them to take a big leap of faith and say, hey, will you do this? Will you commit to this? Um, and we'll do it on a Tuesday night. I know it's not ideal. I don't know how many days of preparation you're going to have. These are going to count. Um, but we need the, the commitment and all four of them were like, yeah, let's, let's do it. And their, their commitment to growing the sport, um, their commitment to even at times putting the growth of volleyball ahead of their own yeah. programs. And, you know, <clears throat> you look at, at I mean, these are going to matter. And I, and I look at something like a Wisconsin and they're going to come in and, 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 and start off the season at Louisville and, when they were prepping it with going like, okay, hey, we may not have as many practice opportunities. Um, I, I, I really credit them. And some of the fun things that we're going to try to do to, to maybe um, change some things in the, the, the production and, and, and things like that, the, the, the coaches have been just uh, fantastic in saying, yeah, let's, let's do it. We're, we'll, we'll give it a shot. We're on board. Yeah, and I, I mean, we're excited – just to tag along on the outskirts of it with our viewership, just to be around it is, I mean, it just gets more people tuning in. So it's not like, I remember even a few years ago, oh, Nebraska, Wisconsin are playing? Like the, the match would get over mm -hmm. and you didn't know what happened. Where now, the more eyes on it, the better. The more viewers tuning in, oh, this happened, this happened. You know, I always talk about the men's basketball final four and there's three or four studio shows going on around that. Mm -hmm. right? It's it's all that build up and then one company carries the event, but it's all of that build up that you get your fix if you're just a fan and volleyball capitalizing on that is just going to be the next step. Don't you think? I do. I do. I, I, I think. Um, and. You know, I also want to credit, you know, ESPN, Disney to to um, take on the event. And again, with a very short runway, man, you know, TV windows are, are not easy to come by. Yeah. And um, the commitment from um, ESPN and their executives and their programmers um, to say, hey, not only yes, we'll we'll put this on. We're excited about the event uh, in a very short period of time, um, but to say, hey, we're going full um, production. We're going to bring in our A team. We're going to bring in our, our you know, we'll, we're going to uh, do the event with, with three broadcasters plus a sideline. We're going to do a studio show in between. We're going to do a lead in there. You know, their, their commitment to volleyball is, is exciting. I mean, we're also seeing that on, on the other side with like Fox and big 10 network. Yeah. It's just a really good time that, that a lot of programmers see the value, but also the potential in, in what our sport has to offer. Right. Yeah. And, and that's the thing, too. I mean, the the athletes are performing and the product is amazing. Otherwise, growth or not, they wouldn't be catching on if the product wasn't there. Um, and but it is it's like this perfect storm um, for everybody, which all starts uh, with the athletes and the explosion of the game. Uh, but no, we were talking and Amy and I were talking and about on Tuesday when we wanted to wrap up, I'm like, well, we're wrapping up early enough that we can get down there for warmups. Cause I don't want to miss that. Like, mm -hmm. but I mean, the best, best athletes in the country uh, playing, like we want to be fans as well. Um, talk about 
this like it's a big event. It's and it's not like the final four practices are closed on Monday. It's a serious. These matches mm-hmm. definitely matter um, or they're coming in. But I with the fan bases, mm-hmm. so you, have, you know, you have the Ville, you have UK that are obviously close. They're going to bring their fan bases. And then you have Wisconsin and Nebraska who travel well. Uh, of course, maybe the two best traveling fan bases, maybe in the country. Um, I think it's going to be a great atmosphere out and around the Yum Center. I, I think so too. And and one of the, the nice parts with um, technology and ticket sales and things like that is we get to really um, look at the data of where tickets are being purchased. And so, um, you know, instead of just looking into the the stands and going, okay, what percentage of this has, you know, red ends on their chests or what percentage is, yeah. you know, we can start to, to, to look in and I can tell you, Darren, yes, we've got um, a tremendous amount of tickets uh, sold in the, the greater Louisville area and, and a strong showing out of the Lexington area as well. And then Nebraska and Wisconsin have, have bases, but we're seeing a large number of tickets, just volleyball fans that like yes. yourself that's saying, Hey, this is going to be great. And I, I want to, have an opportunity to experience it. And, you know, one of the other things I'll just, I'd like to, you know, kind of share about the event um, is some of this has been, um, I I would say, influenced or inspired by some of the things that are happening internationally. Um, There is, uh, for those that don't know, um, FIVB, who is the national governing body of of the sport, um, has a partner, um, a private company partner volleyball world and what they are uh what they have done is really um you know take a look at the entertainment value um of the sport and how to best present it how to um present it in-house um for those that for the those attending how to best present it um on tv and um i think and even for the experience of the participants so you're going to notice some things that may not be fully typical in a college volleyball match. Um, anybody that was watching the Olympics, you're going to see some things that are, are, are very similar. Like we do not um, plan to have lines judges at the, the matches because the technology that we're going to use is an electronic line calling system. And so um, those things will happen automatically. And if it's close, the people in venue or at home um, we'll see a graphic of the ball traveling, and you'll actually get to see how close that that ball was. Um, we're um, partnering with some some technology groups and ESPN to be able to do things like show attack speed and how high these athletes are jumping, and really start to do a better job of even you know telling the story in a way that you know yes, you and I as volleyball fans you know appreciate it, but then how do we engage that general sports fan to go? wow, okay, I can reference what 10 feet is because I'm familiar with the, the basket on a basketball. But now to see, wow, this is what these these athletes are, are, are doing and the level of what they're playing is, is I think we'll be able to tell that story maybe a little bit better. Oh, yeah. And that's amazing. And I think that's what I've even seen as a non-volleyball fan a few years ago. I, I think that's what I think kind of brought me in is to see just how athletic um, the athletes have become, even, you know, in South Dakota, I, you know, you could see it. And then when I saw it on the, got my first glimpse on the national level. Wow. Right. Um, Yeah. And, and I think now the whole nation and world or world and now nation are seeing. Yeah. 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 Um, Talk about, with it being the final four city, right? Mm-hmm. So Louisville is the capital um, of NCAA volleyball this year. Is it, was that luck? Is that how you plan to do it going forward or talk about that a bit? Yeah, it was a perfect opportunity. Um, it was just one of those things that a whole lot came together. Um, you know, we had, um, and our offices are based in Lexington. Um, so, and we have great relationships um, with both the Kentucky and the, the Louisville uh, staffs and um, and the unique opportunity, I think, to have the first serve and the final serve be not just in the city of Louisville, but in the Yum Center and on the court that 
um, you know, the, the season will culminate. So I think there's a great <laughs> narrative and story there, um, you know, with it. And really all four teams uh, may very well be in their, their, building their seasons on spending December, end of December in that, that venue. So, um, you know, it could be one, two, three, even four of those teams that are back uh, on there in December uh, competing for a national championship. Well, and I, I've talked to two different athletes, uh, college athletes now that will be playing and, you know, they have a different perspective. Um, it's a long season for them. And so I said, how, how'd you feel about giving up a week of your, a week of your summer uh, uh -huh. to come back early. And they're like, you know, they said something similar about, hey, at least we get to play on the place that we, our goal is to end the season. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that makes it, um, you know, better. They, they obviously didn't like giving up a week of summer break, but having that visual of this is where we want to end. Um, and knowing they're playing in a big event, um, they're like makes it uh, makes it cool and exciting uh, to do that. Speaking of, I guess just uh, excitement before we go into the excitement of your, I think organization in general. Is it is it just me because I get excited for college sports, or I get so bored in the summertime, <laughs> or do you feel do you just sense an excitement? with this upcoming college season that maybe hasn't been there in the past. I just feel this build up like people now are like, yeah, we're four days or we're three days from the first poll. Like they're, they're talking about things that maybe there hasn't been that talk before. Yeah. You know, I, I think Darren, I think you bring up a good point. And, you know, if we look at last season and, how certain things just exceeded expectation, you know, and it, it really started um, early on with Nebraska day and them selling out in, in 92,003 at their football stadium for a volleyball match. And, but, you know, those goals early on were like 30,000, like that's what they were shooting for. They weren't trying to initially fill it and it was like, wow, we can do this thing. And, and then it, and the season ended with a, another record, um, at, in Tampa. And, you know, there were people that were like, Hey, what's the ticket sales going to look like in, in, in Tampa, Florida. And man, they went immediately. Yeah. And so you have this season of last year that we're coming off of that was just outstanding, but it was very organic and like, wow, that just exceeded expectations. And then I think when you look at the competitive side and you say, Oh, okay. Look now what we have, we've got Texas, you know, trying for a three-peat. Like, that's yeah. a storyline in there. You have wow. Maddie Skinner, who's coming back, you know, and trying to do some things as, a, as an individual um, to, to, from a, that standpoint. You've got, you know, the, 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 the job that uh, Nebraska did last year without a senior. And so they've got their whole roster coming back and the, and the, the talent coming back from uh, Wisconsin or from Louisville. Like, it, there is, there is the, the level of what we're, anticipating is really high and i'll say i think it was maybe one of the best freshman classes to enter in um you know with impact players whether it was babcock in in at pitt or you know what we saw from uh you know what nebraska brought in but i think there is there is also an excitement of what's going to happen on the court as much as there is the things that are going to happen uh, off the court we, we've got you know we didn't have last year a Net, uh, a, a college volleyball match, make it on network TV. Last year we had two. I think this year we're scheduled to have five or six on network. You know, that's, a, that's ABC, that's Fox, that's NBC. Um, and so, you know, you start to see these leaps, not just steps, but these leaps and bounds that our sport is, is making. And it's, it's an exciting time. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. Um, Amy and I were sitting down I'm like, all right, one of the segments we're going to do is, uh, I don't remember if we decided four, I think four storylines and we filled that up like that. And then we had to go back and like make cuts because there were yeah. four was, were like, no, like 10. Um, mm -hmm. And that we had to vote up. Yeah. It's, 
it's crazy all the great things and then we were like just kind of like you did we're like oh yeah pit um yeah pit's a pretty dang good story too um <laughs> yeah. yeah let's not forget uh, uh yeah fish has been to like seven final fours in row two right and that's just they that's how they want it don't talk about them right let's mm -hmm. leave them out of it and then you're like what's that next program to pop on the scene and it was like oh is there really parody and yeah like all these things and has the baton been passed right is it texas you know there's so yeah. many things oh and and i i would also throw in there like you know don't um uh, don't don't lose sight of florida and you know, if they're healthy, they're going to be really good. They've got some great players returning. I mean, so there's a whole lot of really exciting, uh, like you say, storylines and narratives and, and good luck keeping it to four. Yeah. Well, we won't. And we'll go way over, but that's what we do. So that's okay. But uh, they talk about your uh, organization um, and uh, – being in Lexington, um, but just talk about the ABCA because I know the little we've chatted, you've brought up some really cool initiatives and, and things you're moving on. What are some of your main initiatives, your main goals that the ABCA is kind of attacking in the near future and long term? Yeah. Um, you know, one of the things that I am incredibly grateful for is just the, in the incredible work done by Kathy DeBoer to build an incredible foundation for the AVCA, but even beyond that for volleyball. And I think one of the things that she did a, a great job doing is um, filling the needs. And um, fortunately, a lot of those, we'll just say core needs have, have, have gotten some good momentum. Um, and, uh, you know, my, I think, responsibility and opportunity is to figure out how do we best serve the entire community of volleyball. And at a time that we're seeing incredible growth and opportunity, we want to make sure that we're doing everything we can to amplify and accelerate that. Um, I, in my core, believe that if you're going to really grow, uh, you know, a sport and, and also keep in mind when we're talking because it's the start of the season of, of women's indoor, you know, but you know, we also represent the men's indoor and the beach that'll be, you know, so it's, it's constant. And that's one of the things that's also exciting about this job is that it's year round. We're not waiting for, you know, the season to start because as one ends, the next one's getting ready. Yeah. Yeah. Ready to go. But I, I think one of the, if we're really going to move this sport um, in a meaningful way forward, I believe that you have to have growth um, from the top down. Um, and we're seeing that in our initiatives with the first serve, um, we're doing it on the beach with our pairs national championship. We're we're going to be um, really enhancing with some partnerships of with Nike, our uh, our All American program, and and some of the ways that we can um, recognize the excellent athletic achievements um, of these men and women. Um, but then there's also the bottom up. You know, it's it's that those two efforts, and so uh, I think there is a, a tremendous opportunity um, for us to engage in the high school space and really do things to provide um, structure to elevate that, um, to, to improve the way that we recognize um, outstanding high school players and, and enhance our, our All-American program. Um, we're going to be launching a High School Player of the Year um, initiative with four finalists by the end of the year and, and really try to help build some of those those stories. Um, and then I also want to make sure, I think this is incredibly important um, that we have to be very protective of with our sport is that we're maintaining accessibility to it. Um, you know, as this sport grows, um, it is important that um, everybody uh, has an opportunity and a pathway um, to enjoy the sport, whether it be as a fan, um, whether it be a, a player, or it be as a, a professional, uh, as, a, as a coach, as a director of operations, as a, uh, a broadcaster or, or somebody in that space. And so making sure, you know, we've um, launched uh, some pretty significant efforts in the foundation side with um, our Volleyball for All program, um, our diversity uh, initiatives, and we're seeing <clears throat> tremendous engagement from our, our coaching um, staff to get behind um, those efforts. So I think you know, it's a pretty, it's a, a pretty big uh, initiative and, and, and task. Um, but A, I think it's worth it. But B, um, man, we have this incredible opportunity to do something special with the sport of volleyball. Yeah, it's, uh, 
I mean, it's just crazy to look back on the few years I've been in and watching it in South Dakota, right, where where it's gone and the level that high school and club coaches and and as I'm out doing my cookie dough rounds, right, these next couple of weeks and in so many high school gyms, how much better the high school volleyball has gotten and the club volleyball. And that's in our small sample size, but let alone the nation. Um, it It's amazing. You, you all brought me in from being a football coach who used to just have to do security. Mm -hmm. I just had to make sure the football players didn't run on the court and make idiots of themselves. And I'm like, oh, a volleyball match. And now – I'm hooked. So y'all are doing something right, but uh, well, and I don't know. I, I think it's and it's not us. It's obviously it's it's everybody. It's and and you know it's it's also kind of neat. You know, Darren, when you talk about being a, a convert or you know saying, "Hey, you 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 brought me in here," and we're also seeing some um, you know pretty elite athletes whose now families are are. Yeah, yeah. You've know, got LeBron James's daughter, and he's in there watching the beach you know, volleyball in, in Paris and Steph Curry's daughter. And, um, you know, I watched a, a thing with uh, Tom Brady and his daughter at the Olympics. And I think they went to maybe five or six events and two of them were volleyball, you know, and, and, you know, it, it, so it's, it's really neat to see not just the people who have grown up in the sport and appreciate it and have passion for it. Um, but then when we see people, whether it be like yourself or others that are, you know, we'll call relatively new to engaging and, and really embracing the sport and, you know, we guys kind of sit here and goes, geez, Darren, what the hell took you so long? You know, I mean, come on, man. How, how did God, you haven't been living under a rock? You know, <laughs> everybody, you wonder why I love Jamie. It's because he just put me in a sentence with LeBron James, Tom Brady and Darren Tipton. That's why I love this guy. So, uh, man, hey, I'm calling you. You are the LeBron James of South Dakota, my friend. <laughs> so, uh, nobody in South Dakota would say that. But uh, listen now. So let's get back this match. The yeah. one Go, go through it for everybody. So Monday, teams will come in. So that's a practice day, uh, a closed practice day. Um, mm -hmm. And then Tuesday, I'm sure they have their uh, their serve pass. Um, and then the matches, um, go through the match schedule for everybody. Um, yeah. Tuesday night. Yeah. So um, we'll have – it'll start off with uh, Nebraska and Kentucky. Um, they'll first – the official first serve of the 24 season will happen at – 706 on uh, ESPN2 and um, following the completion of that game uh, a little bit less than a half an hour but about a half hour uh, then we'll we'll go uh, to Louisville and, and Wisconsin and so you know it's it's there's not really an undercard here um, no nope. both um, you know, amazing <laughs> amazing matches and you know it's it's kind of like wow I get both of these um, yeah. you know for this night and and so, yeah, it's it's going to be it's going to be pretty neat. And, and as I said, there'll be some I think fun things for the people in attendance um, to experience something a little bit different. And then again, those that are are watching it on TV, uh, I think we'll see some enhancements to the production. Any um, so I know you're not going to tell me, but the first poll is Monday, right? Mm -hmm. the polls come out. Yeah, I'm a big poll guy. I mean, oh, he, well, hey, let, we, we've got you. It's, uh, let, let's, what are your, I know what it is. Or, 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 I you, know. You've got four teams. Where do you think they're going to land on, on Monday's poll? Well, I know because everybody goes, they don't research at all. I, first of all, it should be an amendment. It should be written in the constitution. That if you're going to vote in a poll, you have to post how you vote in a poll. Now, I've lost friends over that, uh -huh. uh, South Dakota doing that. Um, but you should have to come out and vote and justify why. All these people that do rankings, mm -hmm. and I read some crazy ones last week, by the way. Um, you should have to come out and say why you put somebody where. Mm -hmm. What do you so, think about that? Well, so we actually, the way that we run our our poll, um, which is coaches, it's uh, – it's a coach's poll, so it's the people who are most um, educated and and most intimately aware of of what recruiting classes and things like that 
um, that that really you know understand it. They know who's coming back. They know who's who's had had troubles and stuff like that. So so we really rely on on our coaches, and um, we also had an opportunity to do some reallocation in the way that we we did it with just some of the um, changes in conference realignments and and some things like that. Um, but our voters, as the coaches, um, they uh, their votes within each other um, are shared. So if you and I were both a, a, a poll voter, I would know I would be able to see how you're voting, um, and you would be able to see how how I vote. Um, we've made a decision. We've had a lot of discussion of whether we should put those um, publicly. Um, we, for example, if you're the if you're let's say the coach at Wisconsin, if you're Kelly Sheffield and you happen to be a, a poll voter, and you know <laughs> I want to be a little bit conscious of, of right. that, on how he he does that. And here's the thing: yeah. because we have so much public interest now, um, we do want to make sure that nobody is influenced beyond what. Uh, right. Yeah. Never mind. I have a lot of dumb ideas. That was like my tenth today. Don't. No. And but don't here's the thing: some. there are there are a lot of polls that do operate that way. Um, we and maybe it's a little bit as a coaches association. I'm also going to be a little bit protective of our no our coaches. No, I I thought about that. I just think we do our players uh, ones when uh, some of them are nuts. But uh, but what I would say, I would oh boy now now if it's coaches because they actually know what's going on. <laughs> um, boy, I don't know how. I think he'd still don't. Don't you have to start the year with Texas number one? Yeah, that's a safe bet. I mean, they're they just won two in a row. I, they got a lot. They got some returning, but I, I think there's a lot of arguments. At, at, at well, there's the, a lot of arguments. Yeah. And number two would be Nebraska because they have everybody back, and then they're on that mission, right? That's the good storyline. Mm -hmm. They're on the mission. Um, but then you have see. I think Wisconsin has an awesome storyline. Now I'm giving away our whole show. <laughs> Wisconsin's got that, you know, that overlook came up just short, right? They beat mm -hmm. Nebraska last year. So, and then they're always going to have that chip in the Big Ten. So they're there. And then, oh, by the way, the ultimate chip is always Pitt, right? And by the way, they have a little bit coming back a lot. Mm -hmm. Um and then you have Louisville, who I don't know if they could have gotten any closer with Pitt. I mean, two, five sets. And those teams didn't get any worse. No. But they're and they're going to be, and they're going to, they've got the opportunity. The, they have the one unique opportunity that nobody else in the country has, which is the chance to play on your home floor oh. in the final four and to try and, and do something there. And that can be a motivator. Um, pretty cool as well. And then they, oh, but that could be, yeah. See, I am the weird one. I hate, I mean, I love it, but I hate this time of year. Because <laughs> I, well, I mean, in this fact, like, I like, there's so many people now. Well, you got to feel that way. Like all these people, you get to, there's some that are really your friends, like you care sure. about them, right? And I end up at tournament time. I'm like, oh no, one of these guys got to lose, right? Like I, you know, like yeah, I, even this one, I'm like, oh man, I like both of these people, yeah. you know. So and, and, I, don't know. and I, I think you know, and you've also um, you've also left out Stanford in there. I know. I mean, they've got arguably the best setter in the country, and um, you know, they they've got quite a bit of talent there. I think they've got some you know, good returners and some good youth and. Um, you know, so there's, it's, and that's what you want from a, um, from a sport. Okay. Is when we, in, when two people that are just passionate and, and love the game can go through and, and have an <laughs> argument of like, you know, eight or nine or 10 teams that could be in the final four and that, that maybe six or seven of them that are really in the position to win. And that's, that's healthy for our, our sport. Yes. Oh, and by the way, there's a team in uh, blue and orange South South. It's like, ah, uh, yeah. hey, talking about a good setter, everybody. Yeah, we're coming for you. Yeah. yeah, Florida, and this is what, and America, we can discuss, and we don't have to hate each other at the end of the day, right? We can just still yeah. be friends. I love it. Okay, so we better wrap this up. Um, this was awesome. Here, I was 
14 minutes ago. I'm like, how are we going to do a half an hour? We did it. <laughs> and I keep my streak. We went over again. Um, but Jamie, thank you so much, especially with all your time. Um, everybody, the ABCA uh, First Surf Showcase is going to be amazing. Um, if you're down in the Ville and visiting, um, if you're from out of town, go do your pre-gaming so you're ready for the Final Four. Amazing places to eat. It's a cool downtown um, what a cool place to visit and a lot of history there. So go do your research. So you're ready when you come back in December, enjoy your time down there. If you're watching on TV Tuesday night, um, our coverage, we're going to do our live stream on our YouTube, on our Instagram, on our Twitter, um, internet, internet willing, we will be on at two o'clock on Monday. Um, and then back at four o'clock. And then I think, uh, 4 30 on Tuesday, but we'll put that on our social medias all week. So Jamie Gordon, uh, president of the ABCA, I thank you. Yeah. And Dan, hey, thank you so much. And I, I, I know you're wrapping it up, but there's one other thing that I think is important for your, yes. your listeners to follow. And that's, um, ESPN invested in a, a production, uh, for a documentary on Nebraska an E60, uh, then I had the pleasure of, of, uh, being there and viewing their their uh, premiere, and it will have broadcast um, on uh, Sunday the twenty fifth on ESPN, I believe at five o'clock. And okay. I don't care whether you're a volleyball fan, a Husker fan, um, or just a sports fan, or just <clears throat> human interest. It's a, it, they did an outstanding job with the with the production of it. Um, there's raw uh, emotion. There is really good insight, and and I think it's uh, something that um, is. Like other parts of this past season and, and things with volleyball, I have a feeling it will uh, gain some momentum and, and exceed expectations as well. So I encourage uh, your viewership to check it out as well. That's this come. Uh, that, that's next Sunday. Next Sunday, the twenty fifth. So August twenty fifth. Okay. Uh, so check social medias. I'm sure that'll be uh, promoted. Um, yeah, what a great way to lead into uh, the season even more. And um, anything to do with Nebraska is going to be a huge following for that, and a lot of excitement. So, uh, uh, and I believe the first one ever done on volleyball. If if that is true, you know, um, if I'm correct there. So a uh, great job. And again, everybody, uh, Jamie Gordon, follow him. Coaches, uh, if you're not a member of the ABCA. Uh, definitely uh, join on what they're doing and where they're going um, for the little I've heard is amazing. And, and I can't wait for the final four uh, again this year. And, uh, but let's enjoy the season before we jump to yep. jump to December. So uh, thank you everybody for tuning in uh, to the VB adrenaline podcast, where we just kind of talk about everything and anything in volleyball and hope to educate our viewers just a little bit more. Well, I get educated myself, so make sure and follow us on socials, on Instagram as we continue to rebuild our uh, Volleyball Adrenaline account, and at VB Adrenaline on Twitter, and follow our uh, YouTube channel. And again, look for our live show coverage on Monday and Tuesday from uh, Louisville, and we'll broadcast that on all our, all our socials. Again, thanks for everybody, and we'll see you soon. Take care.